All right, so this video is going to talk about wave interference. I think this is a concept you guys did uh, kind of to death, probably, in physics, uh, but we have to talk about it again. So wave interference occurs when you have two or more wave systems that collide, and they can either increase the height or decrease it, depending on what type of interference. There are three types, constructive, destructive, and mixed. The definitions are given here. But basically, in constructive interference, wave trains um, bump into each other, which have about the same wavelength, same period, and so on. Destructive, um, we call it out of phase rather than in phase, like constructive, where they have, again, about the same wavelength, um, but this time they come trashed across. We'll talk about that in greater detail in two slides. Finally, the most common one, mixed, which is two swells with different wavelengths, different wave heights, um, and how they interact. There's a figure in your book that sort of has all three together. Um, you can look at it. It's figure 8.14. I believe it's the same in both books. In phase means that um, they're additive. So it's called the sum in your book. But basically, when the waves move past each other, they come in in phase. Meaning, when they're uh, past each other, they come in crest to crest or trough to trough. And because they have the same wavelength, you end up with an increase in the wave height proportional to each wave itself. So if one of the waves has a height of 2 meters and the other wave has a height of 5 meters, um, the sum, the, the additive force of the constructive interference, is would then be 7 meters. You can see how this could result in some much bigger waves than you would expect. Destructive. Um, so constructive constructs, adds together. Destructive takes away. So the trains still have to have the same wavelength, um, but they're out of phase. So instead of coming in crest to crest, they come in crest to trough. And if the wave height is also the same as the wavelength, you can actually end up coming back to still water level. Because if, if a wave height is 2 meters and the wave height of the other wave is also 2 meters, but they come in crest to trough, you're going to come back to still water level. I think Mr. V actually does a demo with this with sound waves um, where he has that sound generator that you can actually see the sound waves come through. And um, he can create two sound waves that are in perfect uh, out of phase. You can actually make, uh, quote unquote, um, silence, which is kind of interesting. Mixed interference is much more common. Um, you find it very often in the open ocean where you have swells coming from different storms all over the planet. Frequently they don't have the same wavelength. They can have various wave heights. Um, sometimes when they interact you have constructive, some parts have destructive. You can get very complex patterns and it is believed that they are what give rise to rogue waves, which we'll talk about in greater detail. Watch a cool little video with a Lego pirate. Not enough Lego pirates in science. This is the picture in the book. Um, be careful that you're looking at it the right way. In my opinion, it's lined up funny. Um, this right here, this whole trough, we're adding this wave to this wave and getting a much bigger wave, okay? So this is constructive. I Don't, don't look at them this way. That would not be right. Um, out of phase, obvious, and um, mixed. This three is not a mistake. We're going to talk about the threes and the three um, sisters rule when it comes to row waves in a minute. Uh, but make sure you understand these pictures and winkity wink might be able to redraw them. Hey, a box. I know when you guys do your notes, you're like, boxes mean we can ignore them. Not the case ever, but especially not here. Row waves, everybody loves row waves. They're so roguish, I guess. Um, the, when we have a row wave, we're talking to an unusually large wave. Um, how unusually large? That's, you know, that remains to be seen. Um, it is sort of an understood rule that, that, you know, it's about 10 times the average height. So if, if your significant wave height or your average wave height is 2 meters, then to be considered a rogue wave, it would have to be 20 meters. Um, and very rarely we get what are called uh, super waves. And here are the ratios for them about how often they occur. Um, but one in every 23 waves is going to be twice the average height. Um, one in every 1,100 and change is going to be three times the average height. And, um, and then it goes up there from there. One in billions of waves would be monstrous, like the Ramapo, you know, 34 meters or higher. But billion seems like a large number. But remember, there are billions of waves 
all the time on the ocean. Um, ocean's a big place, lots of waves. So row waves happen more often than we think, and we're actually finding more and more videos um, and credible first-hand accounts of people interacting with row waves um, frequently in, in, in tragic ways. Uh, in 2006, the RV Bolina um, was a uh, quite expensive state-of-the-art RV uh, research vessel, and it flipped and sunk just due to a 15-foot row wave. There was, like, very calm seas, but this one hit it broadside and rolled it, and that was that. I believe people died as well because um, it sank so quickly. Every year, about 10 ships go missing, and um, in large part, this is attributed to rogue waves. I know everybody likes, you know, to think about the Bermuda Triangle, um, but we, we're beginning to think rogue waves are taking more and more ships, especially when we see satellites and, and um, can actually see sometimes these rogue waves when we're looking at satellite uh, images. And even though we can see them, um, we actually cannot predict row waves. There's just too much going on with, you know, you have to have the perfect circumstances, the wind, the fetch, the distance over which it blows, the storm in this quadrant, and so on and so forth. Um, but we, they're due to really, um, it says constructive interference, they're really due to a, a, the very small amount of constructive interference that comes from mixed interference, meaning you have waves coming, they don't have the same wavelength, but very, ever so often, they just add together. And you get just enough to make constructive interference in that one little spot and get a rogue wave. All right, so hopefully this video works. We had the little Lego man. It's a pirate, of course. I believe this was filmed at Stevens right here in New Jersey. You can see there's waves coming. And if you look in the back, uh, the wave generator actually will send out, uh, hopefully you can catch it, a, a wave of a much longer wavelength. Here it comes. Uh, you can see it coming in the back there. So it's kind of jogging along, perfectly normal, can handle these waves without an issue. This other wave is moving faster and is beginning to catch up with the first set of waves they made. Count it when the waves go by. Uh, one, two, three, and he's over. Rogue waves are believed to form um, most often in groups of three, uh, with the second wave being the largest. Um, I guess you can record that again if you watch it again if you want to. And that's where we're going to stop.